your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And your spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yokes. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. In the spirit, speak around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yokes. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirits will move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the you. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the you. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. In the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the you. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the you. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence. The anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And your spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit moves around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there is anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your praise, I'm so happy. When I enter into your praise, I'm so glad. In your praise, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the you. When I enter into your praise, I'm so happy. When I enter into your praise, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing, and the spirit moves around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing, and the spirit moves around me. In your presence. The anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. 
In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit moves around me. In your presence, the anointing prays to you. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into the presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit moves around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your praises, I'm so happy. When I enter into your praises, I'm so glad. In your praises, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your praises, the anointing may bring to you. When I enter into your praises, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing break to you. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit moves around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks to you. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit moves around me. In your presence, anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your praise, and there's anointing, and the spirit moves around me. In your praises, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your praise, I'm so happy. When I enter into your praise, I'm so glad. In your praise, there's anointing, and the spirit moves around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And your spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit moves around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. When I In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. 
in your presence. The anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. In your spirit, move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there is anointing. In the spirit, move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And that's where we move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there is anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there is anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your praises, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your praise, there's anointing. And the spirit moves around me. In your praises, the anointing breaks the yoke. Heart of a chicken. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And your spirit moves around me. In your praises, the anointing breaks at you. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your praises, I'm so glad. Yes. When I enter into your presence, and the spirit move around me, in your praises, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit moves around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. When I enter into your presence, I'm so happy. When I enter into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there's anointing. And the spirit move around me. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. Thank you, Jesus. 
My Ele was she carrying my Santa Ele. My Father, my Father, I give you glory, Lord, today. You alone are able to do and know, make and do, Lord, Father. I worship in the beauty of your holiness. There is no one in your God. I give you glory, Lord, today. I worship you, I worship you, Jesus. You are not worthy to be praised. My Father, oh my Father, you are not worthy to be praised, Lord. I give you glory, Lord Jesus, we are not There is no one in your God. I worship you, Jesus. I give you glory, Lord, my Father. I give you glory, Lord, my Father. You are no one worthy to be praised, Yahweh. Oh, no, I give you glory, glory, Lord Jesus. I worship you in the beauty of your holiness, Lord. You are able to do what no man can do, Lord. Father, I worship you, Lord. I give you glory, Lord, this morning. I give you glory, Lord, this hour. You are not worthy, Lord Yahweh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I worship you, Lord. I give you glory, Lord, my Father, my Father. Come and manifest your power, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. You are able to do, Lord. What no make you do, Lord, Father? I give you glory, Lord, I give you glory, Lord. You are the one worthy, Lord, Yahweh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord. 
What would I be said of me? If you didn't know my his law, I've come to realize, law, you are all that I have, law. You are a matter, law. I put you in front, law. In front of my melody, you are all that matter. I may room for too low. You and I, Jesus. You are all that matter. You are all that matter, Lord. Oh, way, oh, way, Lord. You are all that matter. You are all that matter. You are all that matter, Lord. Oh, way, oh, way. You are all that matter. You are all that matter, Lord. Ah, no, she killed it. Most of it. 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 Thank you, Lord. Ah, I did it. More to be that. Lord, I worship you, Lord. Father, I take you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Give God the glory right now, wherever you are. Give the Father the glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are all that matter, Lord. 
I'm a group for two. You ain't no Jesus. You are a matter, Lord. You are all a matter. What would that become of me if I didn't see the light? What would that be said of me if I if you didn't hold my hands? I have come to realize that you are all I have. I have come to realize, God, that you are all I have. You are all that matter. I put you in front of me. In front of my melody. You are all that matter, Lord. I'm a room for two. You and I, Jesus. You are all that matter. You are all that matter, Lord. Is it the house or is it the car? I'll give them all to you. Is it the name or is it the faith? I'm nothing without I'm you. I'm nothing without you, Lord. What would have become what of me? What would have become of me if I didn't see the light? What would have been said of me? What would have been said of me if I didn't see the if you didn't hold my hands? I have come to realize that you all that I have. Yes, Lord.
Yes, Lord. Does God really matter to you today? You are the matter, Lord. You are all the matter. You are all the matter, Lord. You are all the matter. You are all the matter. I put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all the matter. You are all the matter, Lord. I put you in front, Lord, in front of my destiny. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all that matters. You are all that matters, Lord. You are all that matters. You are all that matters, Lord. Come on, rise to let praise go. How do I shake it? Thank you, Jesus. How do I shake it? You are all that matters. Father, I worship you in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I worship you, Lord. You are able, God. You alone are able to do what no man can do, Lord. Jesus, take control right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you in the beauty of your holiness. 
We cover this place with the blood of Jesus. Everyone that's taking their basic schedule to wash, to listen to the word of God, cover them with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Babili, so long, Baba, so long, Baba. Jehovah, you, I trust in you. Harava Shiki, we're going to worship God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
I cannot imagine where would I be without you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I cannot imagine what I would be without you, Lord. What would I be without you, Lord? How would I be without you, Lord? Jesus, Omega Naya. Omega Naya. Omega Naya. Oh, but to be Jesus. Omega Naya. How far you brought us, Lord? Amen. I understand, Lord. Amen. I understand. Oh, Amen. I understand. Amen.
How far you brought us? Take me no no sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that was you. We're going to continue by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Welcome, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will all rejoice and be glad in it. We will all rejoice and be glad in it. Because men may not understand how far the Lord has brought us. What he has done in our individual lives. Collectively. We all are our living testimony. You got testimonies. You know what God has done for you. You know where he has brought you from. And he know. He continue and turn the mercies over you. Men will not understand what the Lord has done in your life. It is marvelous in the sight of God. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you this morning. Holy Ghost, thank you. Please share and invite someone. This topic is very crucial. It's very sensitive. It's very relevant to our Christian life. It's very important to our daily lives. Forgiveness. Please share and invite someone. Please. God is speaking to someone today. God has a message for someone today. The Holy Spirit is speaking to someone today. Who is finding it difficult to forgive. Someone of their wrongdoing towards them. Someone that caused them to be shattered in life. Someone that caused them to be lonely. Someone that caused them to be childless, someone that caused him to be jobless, someone that have caused him to become homeless, someone that have caused him to be in prison, incarcerated, someone that have caused him to be in a mental health facility, seeking psychological support, someone that have caused him to be lying with ailments, someone that have caused him to be lying in the hospitals, someone that have caused him to be disabled. To become a handicap. Someone that has caused them so much pain. God is sending a message to you today. To forgive. It is paramount to us as believers. The Bible is urging you and I to forgive. God is forgiving. So he's urging us to forgive. Please share and invite someone. Please. There is a message for people today. By the leading of the Holy Spirit. Please share and forgive. And invite someone may the lord bless you all in jesus mighty name amen as per the topic yesterday per the leading of the holy spirit we say psychologists generally defined forgiveness as a conscious deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Forgiveness. It is the heal, the healing to so many ailments that we are experiencing or you are experiencing out there. Forgiveness it's a healing therapy for you. Forgiveness. 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 You ought to forgive. If you don't forgive, do you expect God to forgive you? If you don't forgive your brother of their wrongdoing or their shortcoming against you, do you expect God to forgive you? God has urged us all to forgive. Remember, forgiveness is of God. And unforgiveness is of the devil. Because it's the devil who plays on people's heart to say, Oh, whenever your brother wrong you, you have to retaliate before he or she consider you to be a weakness. Before people call you a weakness, before people look down upon you, you have to stand up, you have to stand out, you have to speak out your mind, you have to for, you have to retaliate, you have to revenge. Those people that are prompting you to retaliate, the devil is using them 
against you, against your brothers. Because forgiveness is of God. God urges us to forgive our brothers, our friends for their wrongdoing. So why are you finding it so difficult to forgive? May the Lord help us today so we can be able to forgive our brothers and sisters of their wrongdoing. Forgiveness. According to our text, Galatians 1, 13 to 14, I'm going to read. It says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is crucial to every believer today. Forgiveness. If you are a believer that cannot forgive, where well, you have a serious problem, you have a serious problem. Romans 12, 19, I can say from 17 to 19 says, Vengeance is of the law. So God tell us to never take advantage of revenge and to leave it to the law. God is the ultimate judge and when we seek revenge, we are taking his place. Remember Isaiah 42 verse 8. God does not share his glory with another. No. When you want to revenge, then you are taking the Lord's place. You are taking God's place in your life. God doesn't like it when we take his place. It means we are despising that he does not exist. When we become overwhelmed with what others have done wrong, we become filled with anger and find ourselves focused on hate. That's the truth. When people wrong you, you know it still you to be so righteous, temperament, restless. You want to retaliate. Some people can be so destructive. Some people, they will even tear the clothes they are wearing. They will be boiling with rage, with anger. They want to stab someone to death. That's what unforgiveness does. And that's why revenge does. Because you are unforgiving, you seek to revenge. Or you seek revenge on your own. Yes. We become filled with anger and find ourselves focused on hate. God's love and forgiveness is seen in our ability to love and forgive. We ought to love and forgive. First Peter 3 9 says, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you will you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Forgiveness. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. 2 Corinthians 3.11 Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. When you are forgiving, you have the peace of God. The Lord will punish those who wrong you when you give it to him. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 says, He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is still emphasized on revenge in his word. According to Deuteronomy 32, 35. It is mine to revenge. I will repay in due time. Their foot will slip, their day of disaster is near, and their doom rushes upon them. Leave revenge to God. Do not revenge for anything someone wrong you or people wrong you. Do not revenge. Try to forgive and leave it to the Lord. Hebrews 10 and 30 said, For we know him who said, It is mine to revenge, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. Mark eleven twenty five. This is so crucial to us. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your heavenly Father may forgive you your sins. You ought to forgive people. 
No matter how you speak in tongues, you pray fire and thunder. When you lack forgiveness, your prayer will not be answered. Take it or leave it. It is the word of God. God honor his word above his name. He word he sent forth to us will not return to him for. According to Isaiah 55, 8 to 11. He was will not return to him for. Likewise, the word he sent forth to us will not return to him for unless it accomplishes the purpose for which it was sent. So we ought to forgive. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he should repent. What he says, he does, and what he promises, he fulfills. Numbers 23 19. So why are you finding it so hard to forgive? Revenge is not good for believers. Taking people to the court of law is something that we shouldn't do as believers. The Bible said we were judged angels in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Why are we often taking people to the court of law? The devil has blinded our minds. Please let us forgive and take it to the Lord in prayers. You are listening to me today. God is speaking to you. Please, withdraw that case against your brother or your sister. Let the Lord take it course. Let the Lord Jesus be the judge. Please, try to forgive. If you refuse to forgive, you will not receive your total healing, your total restoration. The divine visitation of God will not be experienced by you. Because God is love. Therefore, he's urging us to love one another. He said we should love the na our neighbors as ourselves. According to Mark 12, 31. The second golden rules of the Ten Commandments. First, God is urging you and us to love the Lord our God with all our might, with all our soul. With all that is within us, he's urging us to love God. But how do you claim to love God whom you haven't seen? And you don't like your brothers, your sister, you don't forgive them. You often sue them, you take them to court, you keep malice against them. You hate them so much. You have refused to forgive, to let go. The word of God is telling us today to kindly forgive our brothers and sisters. Forgive. It is mandatory. It is not ne negotiable. God is saying, forgive your brother of their wrongdoing. If you forgive them, he God also will forgive you your wrongdoing, your sins. So, this is the rule of engagement. When you know your rule, it is clear. Daniel eleven thirty two says, "Those who know their God will do strong and will be strong and do exploits." The rules of engagement. Try to forgive your brothers and sisters of their wrongdoing. Try. Try. We know it is so difficult. It is so, so difficult. It is so difficult. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Peter asked the Lord, say, how many times must we forgive our brother? Seven times? Jesus replied, he said, I didn't say seven times. But 70 times seven. Or 77 times in a second. It is infinitive, infinity forgiveness. It is unconditional. Do not attach any condition to say, I will forgive you, but you have to give me one thousand dollars. You have to build me a house. Leave it to the law to take revenge for you. It's important for us believers. We ought to forgive and truly let go. You cannot say you forgive your brother. Then you say you don't want to have anything to do with them. You have to forgive and let go. Christian brothers and sisters. There are so many things that 
are at stake because we are not forgiving our, our brothers. We are not forgiving ourselves. We ought to forgive. Forgiveness in Christianity is a manifestation of submission to Christ and fellow believers. This is based on the belief that God forgives sins through faith in the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ in his death. 1 John 2, 2. And that therefore Christians should forgive others. Ephesians 4, 32. We ought to forgive. We ought to forgive. We ought to forgive. We ought to forgive. Forgiveness is so important to us. Forgiveness is for our growth and happiness. When we hold on to hurt, pain, resentment, and anger, it harms us far more than it harms the offender. Oh, yes. People are living in your heart free, run free. It hurts you, it causes you more danger than the person you are holding against. The person is flourishing, going about their business, but you are there, you are grieving because you refuse to let go. Oh, yes. Forgiveness free us to live in the present. Our anger, regret, hatred, or resentment towards someone means that we are giving up our power to the person. When you do not forgive, it means you are surrendering yourself to, to your, the person you are holding against. You are making them so powerful over you. That is what unforgiving it does. You have to forgive people, please. Let us understand what forgiveness is. The pain and the hurt. Relieving and reflecting. Working it out. Renouncing your anger, your anger and resentment. It's good to forgive. Unforgiveness is not good. Therefore, I say to you, Matthew 2, 31 to 32, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven men, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. God is saying he can forgive us any other thing, but the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. That is not up to you to decide. It's up to the call. But he's also ought to forgive one another. We ought to forgive. We ought to forgive. In the Lord prayer, we say, Jesus, God taught us forgiveness. It is the responsibility of humanity to forgive sins. Jesus gave the disciples the commandment to go out and teach and forgive sins. You ought to forgive someone truly. Please. You ought to forgive. It is not good when you have unforgiveness in your heart. God is asking you, move on to the next act. Reconnect to the spirit. Don't go to sleep angry. Husband and wife, people of God, whenever someone offends you, do not go to sleep angry. It's good to resolve your conflict before, you conflict before going to bed. It's important. Switch their focus from blaming others to understanding yourself. Sometimes take the blame. Stop apportioning blames to others for every wrong. And you don't want to take the blame. It's not a good way of life. Avoid telling people what to do. Learn to get or to let go be like water. You see the river, the water? We go to the river in the villages. Or during the summer, people go to the beaches. They will swim in the rivers. They will do all lot of dirty things in the river. But after they leave, the river become fresh. And ever ready. That's how we're supposed to be like Christians. We have to be like the rivers. To be fresh at all times. Not to hold people. Take responsibility of your parts. Oh, yes. Most people will always count the wrong other doors. Or other do to them, but they don't want to admit to their own wrongdoing. It's not good. As believer, take your own responsibility of your wrong. 
Let wise your brothers. Let go resentment. It is important. It's good to forgive people. If you hold on to resentment, it can sour you and keep you from finding peace. When you can't forgive, your emotional wounds can close, close and heal. When you refuse to forgive, your emotional wound, wounds, those hurts, will not be healed. But when you forgive, you are not saying what someone did was okay. When you, for, when you forgive people, it's not that what they did to you was okay, but you just had to let go. Because the Bible is, is asking you to let go. You have to forgive people. People continue to hurt you, continue to forgive them. Seven times seven, seven, seven times in your second is not an easy thing for anyone to fight on with. God is saying we should forgive. That brings me to we Africans. There is so much been going on that unforgiveness have caused a lot of problems that have taken away a lot of lives that have killed a lot of innocent people. Stereotype is one of the key reasons that lead to, forgive, to unforgiveness. Stereotyping. When John does something, it's good to deal with John as an individual and let John affiliate a relation out of it. Deal with John as an individual who has wronged you. But we are humans, we make mistakes. I don't know if it is an oversight or the devil blind our reasoning. We often capitalize on John's wrong and extend his wrong to his siblings, to his relation, to his ethnic group. That's what prompted the civil war of Liberia. Unforgiveness. We say one individual reveal a secret that was about to occur or take place. But this individual, because he loved this person that the secret was against, he, he decided to reveal it to this person. I'm a human. We all call people that we love. We got individuals in our lives that matter to us. So when we hear ugly stuff about them, we will often hide to go and tell them to take precautions so that to save lives. So if you hear about it that, oh, somebody has revealed this to someone, it's good to confront the person of their wrongdoing, but do not stereotype a group of people or ethnic group that will cause their lives. You plot to destroy them because of some, someone, just one person acts. The Bible is telling us that we should forgive our brothers and sisters. If you do not forgive your brothers and sisters, God will not forgive you. The rules are clear. You can pray fire and thunder. But if you refuse to forgive your brother their wrong points, God in heaven will not forgive you. Mark 11, 25, state it clear. Before you stand to pray as believer, think, reflect your minds. You know when your conscience is clear about people. You know when you have doubt. Go and seek clarity and forgiveness and dispute with your brothers and sisters. Especially during the administration of the Holy Communion. Many people just rush. I don't know. Like, in, like what people have seen before or what we have experienced. The Holy Communion administration, it is done in front of the church, in front of the pulpit. Let people examine themselves, reconcile and pray and walk with confidence to go and take the, receive the communion. But when you walk to people with the communion, they just take it. They just take it and just partake into it without praying, without searching their minds. I have a problem with that. Personally. Before people can take communion, let them reason and examine themselves to forgive others of their wrongdoing, whoever they hold it in their heart. But sometimes when you walk to someone and give them something, if they don't, if they do not walk to receiving it, because you have taken it upon yourself to meet them in their seat, you offer them the communion, they receive it. Sometimes they get ashamed and embarrassed 
because you they don't want you to feel that they have something or they are living in sin so they are reluctant receiving this holy communion without thinking of the after mic the bible said that is why many are sick and sleeping the holy communion should not be taken for granted people have to search their lives before they receive communion in churches it is important people make a mistake it's good the holy spirit just brought it up people have to search their lives and ask for forgiveness you cannot take holy communion on forgiveness an, an unforgiving mind cannot receive holy communion. It is not right. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for just bringing it up. People are dying and getting sick for unforgiveness because they're going to churches today and they're receiving the holy communion. People should be allowed to walk. I know there is COVID 19, there are so many protocols, so many requirements, the do's and the don'ts in churches. But let individual walk to the podium, to the pulpits, to receive communion by themselves. Let him or her examine his life. Then when they walk, it means they are, they are, they are reasoning and they are having the reasoning of mind to forgiving their brothers and sisters. It will refresh their memory. But when you walk, when, imagine someone just enter church. You have already read a Bible verse. That said, let everyone examine themselves. But the person just entered the church and sat down. While you are in the process of a ministering communion, the church receive it without even following the protocol to forgive. It is important. Nations are at longer here today because of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is of the devil, and forgiveness is of God. It is the opposite of forgiveness. Every war has an opposite. It has everything in life has an opposition. When one say yes, others will say no. When the other party say yes, others will say no. It is for in politics. It is for in opposition group, analyst, critics. Someone will agree and someone will disagree. There is always agreement and disagreement. People want to state their opinions. Imagine everyone is right to their opinion, but when it comes to the biblical principle, God does not negotiate with us. It is mandatory when God says, do this, we ought to obey and do it. It doesn't matter what you feel or how you feel. It is God. No one can question him. He does what he likes. At what times, whomever he chooses to do whatever or to execute any task, how he does this, it is God. No one should question God. But he just asked him and also you am I to be forgiven because he is forgiven. It is clear, clear in the scripture. Let God take revenge for you and I. Stop taking vengeance of everything. Please. Many of you have been hurt. Many of us have been hurt in the past. But we have tried to let go and let go. Please try to forgive. If you do not forgive your brothers that are wrong doing, God will not forgive you. It is clear. For John 1 9 says, If we confess our sin, the Lord is faithful to forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. But you have to forgive those who wrong you first. The Lord's prayer says, our Father, which I heaven, help be dying in thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we also forgive those who trespass against us. But the question is, do you really forgive those who trespass against you? Or do we forgive our neighbors? Or our spouses, our husbands and wives? Our mother-in-laws, our siblings? Our pastors? The Holy Spirit just brought it to my attention. Most people, churchgoers, are judging the pastors for the offerings, for the money, for the funds in the church. The Holy Spirit is saying you have to stop it. Stop it. If you are listening to me and you are practicing such a stop it. 1 Corinthians 9, 14 says, those who preach on the altar live on the altar. 
It is not your business to judge the men of God, the pastors, the reverend, the apostles of the money they are eating in the churches. To not do it. The Bible is saying, the Holy Spirit just reminded me, to not do it. Let God be the judge for them. God who called them will be their judge. It is not your business. You just obey. Give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Shake it together. Press it down and run it over. Luke 6, 38. Shall men give back unto your bosom? Obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Remember Malachi said, Can a man rob God? Yea, you ask, In which way have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. He said, Bring in your tithes and offering into the storehouse so there will be meat in my, in my house. The Bible said in verse 10, Put me to 10 and see if I will not prove myself strong. If I will not open the floor gate of heaven and bless it so much that there will be no room to accommodate the blessings. Stop passing judgment on men and women of God. For tithes and offerings. He that has ear, let him listen to what the Spirit says. A voice for the wise. A voice for the wise. Please, stop passing judgment on people of God, on the financial board, or the church financial board. Stop passing judgment on the pastors that they are eating the church money. It is not your place to judge them. Please. Please, please, you focus on your salvation, you focus on the commandment, you focus to be obedient to the word of God, obey what the Bible says, give your tithes and offerings, let God himself judge his servants. It is not your business to judge anyone. Matthew 7, 21 says, Not all that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. Only those who do or do the will of God, the Father. Stop judging men and women of God. Please. This is the message. Stop judging men and women of God. Stop it. How they eat the money, you just be obedient and give. Leave the rest to God, let God be the judge. This is the message. Stop judging men and women of God. Forgive them. Let them do whatever they do. Stop making it as a topic of discussion. Stop it. That's what the Bible says when your left hand gave, do not allow the right hand to know. Whatever money you give, whatever funds you give to the church, let, it, let God lead the pastors to doing the right thing. You pray for them. Stop judging them, please. This is the message. Let's get back to our topic. Let us forgive our brothers their wrongdoing. People have hurt us so much. People have owed you money they refuse to pay. You gave presents to people to take to your people in Africa, wherever it is. They ate these presents. Some of them, you gave them money to undertake a project for you to build. In Africa, they ate your money, they squandered your money. They told lies, they even took you to voodoo priest. They even scandal you. They call you whole pastor, whole bishop. They have forgotten to, to know what they have done to you. But please let the Lord take revenge for you. God will fight for you when you just obey his word. Please. A war for, all, for the wise. God cannot come down to talk to you. He speaks to you through a message. Please. Please. Second Peter 3, 12. I'm going to read. Second Peter 3, 12. Please forgive people. Do not dwell on people saying. Do not say, let people to say you are a weakling. You are not a weakling. Please, you are not a weakling. You just humble. Because you are following the word of God. You are not a weakling. Do not let anyone to call you a weakling. The Bible is urging you and I to forgive. Please forgive. When you forgive, it heals you. Unforgiveness has caused a lot of ailments, high blood pressure. Heart diseases. 
in large heart hypertension, it is due to lack of forgiveness. You refuse to forgive. So you are parting things on your mind. So you are not receiving your healing. As soon as you let go of all bitterness, anger, resentment, all the anxiety, all the stress will leave you, will disappear from you. As soon as you forgive, your healing will be manifested or realized. You will be restored. Everything about you will become fresh when you forgive. The Lord will renew your mind and remote your mind, remote your life when you forgive. Please, stop thinking evil of people. Stop saying you will not forgive anybody. If God can forgive us, who are you to say you can forgive your brothers and sisters? Let us stop for, Let us stop bearing grudges against people. It's not going to help us. It's not. Second Peter three twelve. It said, "Look." Mm -hmm. Yes, second Peter. Oh, first Peter. First Peter three twelve. Say, "For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous." And his ears are open to their prayers. But to, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. If you unforgive, it means you are doing evil. Unforgiveness is, is labeled as evil. Only evil people don't forgive. Only people that the devil use retaliate the revenge. An eye for an eye. An ear for an ear. Or hair for a hair, or shoulder for a shoulder. Only people that lack forgiveness do that. One who lack forgiveness does that. But if you are a child of God, you you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will let go. Most of the pastors that you see soft and calm, you taking advantages over them. They are only doing it because of the gospel of Jesus. They are not a weakling. They are not afraid. But before you can make heaven. You have to let go of your rights and privileges. You have to let go of your bitterness. Before you can follow Jesus, you have to pick up your cross and follow him. Picking up the cross to follow Jesus, you have to forgive, you let go. You show your eyes on everything. You you pay deaf ears to certain things. You, add, you just be meek. You add that you don't, you don't see what they are doing to you. You don't know. People are backstabbing people, pastors, Evil manipulators, hustle enemies, hustle wickedness. They are assassinating people, characters. But forgive them. Let God take revenge on your behalf, please. This is the word of God for you today. Forgive. And you shall be forgiven. If you do not forgive, God will not forgive you. Forgiveness is of God and unforgiveness is of the devil. Do not allow the prince of the world to control your mind like 2 Corinthians 4. 4. So you cannot make heaven. Forgive and make heaven. Forgive and love. And treat people with respect. Tolerate. Accommodate. Be kind to your brothers. Love your neighbor. Have empathy. Those who lack all of those virtues, they are of the devil. The devil doesn't have empathy. Those are ah, 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 ah. those are the criteria that the devil does not condo. No empathy. An, an eye for an eye. One mistake, you out with the devil. With God, you will keep sinning and the Lord will keep pardoning you because you of grace. So do not take grace for granted. But in the camp of the devil, there is no forgiveness. When the wishes commission you to perform a task and you make mistake, they kill you. When principality is saying on a mission to execute a tax on someone or on a group of people and you fail, they eliminate you. There is no empathy in the camp of the devil. But in the camp of God, there is empathy. There is forgiveness. There is why forgiveness is of God and unforgiveness is of the devil. Learn to forgive. You are so hurt. You are so hurt. And you are finding it difficult to forgive. You are even leashing curse on people. Unforgiveness leads lead to curses. To evil curses. 
in the villages, in group of people. People go to voodoo priests because they don't want to forgive. They go seeking demonic power to eliminate their brothers and sisters because they don't want to forgive. People wish war because they lack forgiveness. People hire assassin to assassinate someone because they lack forgiveness. People poison people because they lack forgiveness. And these are all the attributes of the devil. If you cannot forgive, then you are for the devil. So you are only an agent of the devil or wolves in sheep clothing going to church on Sunday, but you are working for the devil. You are not working for God. Or children, children of God have the, the values in the, the those core values to forgive and to love. The devil do not love. The devil do not forgive. So when you are not forgiving your brothers and sisters for their wrongdoing, you are just serving the devil. You are on mission for the devil. You are not serving God. Believe it or you leave it. Forgiveness is of God and unforgiveness is of the devil. The devil urges people and forcing people not to forgive and causing people to retaliate and take vengeance on their own and take the place of God. We are just God and human being. God does not allow us or he doesn't need us to take vengeance against anyone. He allows us to look up to him because he's the author and finisher of our faith. May the Holy Spirit speak to you today to learn how to forgive someone today. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. People are crying. People are in tears for what someone has done to them. Every president of republic, governors, political leaders, war leaders, religious leaders. Some are very unforgiven. Governor said the mayor, superintendent, police, law enforcement officers, they are not forgiven. That is why they often kill people like these murder people, like animals. They lack forgiveness. They are conscious. Their conscience has been compromised. So we ought to forgive. In the case of George Floyd and other people that People kill because of the fear they had a right to doing it. The Holy Spirit is urging us to forgive. Somebody who has caused you so much pain. Your only child. Your only child was taken from you. It hurt. Your husband was snatched from you. It hurt. Your wife left you because of someone brainwashing. And you realize it. And you refuse to forgive those people that are causing you pains. Please forgive. Please. Please forgive. Please. Someone has caused your only child to go wayward and abandon you and create animosity between you. Your child is no longer talking to you. Your child is on their own. The child you born from your belly. Your child is not in good rapport with you because of somebody manipulation against you or between the two of you. Please forgive and pray for your children and pray for those people who are fighting against you. Let the law take revenge. Please forgive. The Holy Spirit is urging you to forgive today. Unforgiveness brought about a lot of lives that were destroyed, damaged, that caused the civil war in our countries that led to genocide that led to the holocaust that took away so many jewish lives it is so painful but let us forgive the genocide in rwanda so many genocide in cambodia in liberia there are so many people that were dead that were killed because of unforgiveness. Remember, it was a spirit that was operating in them. Please forgive. Someone who killed your mother, killed your father. My grandfather was locked up to during 1990 war. But I let go. I've forgiven. Please forgive. Our brothers and sisters died during the war. Mine died too. Please forgive. Please enter your heart. Please take away the anger. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you in the process. It is a process. But it is mandatory from God that we ought to forgive our brothers and sisters for their wrongdoing. May the Lord help us today. May he call his, his face to shine on us. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for your people today. I call this broadcast with the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak to your people that they may forgive their brothers and sisters for their wrongdoing. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for healing them of their wounds, of the many wounds they are carrying in their hearts. Help them, O oh God, to take away the anger, the bitter, the resentment. Lord, thank you. Whenever we pray, you hear us. Father, I forgive all those that wrong me right now. May my brothers and sisters also forgive me. Those that I have wronged one way or the other, those that wrong me, I forgive them. May we forgive one another. Holy Spirit, thank you. Forgiveness is of God and unforgiveness is of the devil. May the Lord help us and deliver us today. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you all for watching. I love you all with the love of God. I'm going to play this music and we call it a day. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us forgive one another. Forgiveness is of God and unforgiveness is of the devil. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, call your people with the blood of Jesus. Call them, Lord. Call them, Jesus. Call them, Lord. Call them, Lord. Forgive us all as him, O Lord. We are all wrong, you, Jesus. We are all wrong, someone down the line. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us, Lord. Oh, oh. Men may not understand how far you brought us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today? Should anything happen to, to you today? Are you sure that you're going to make heaven? Please welcome Jesus into your heart. Revelation 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door of a knock. Whoever hear me and invites me, I will come in and down with them and heal with me. May the Lord enter your homes today. And dwell with you and your families today in the name of Jesus. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you today. My father, my father, 
share the glory, Lord. I pray for my sake, for your people, Lord. Have forgiveness, Lord. Have your forgiveness, Lord. Father, forgive your people of their wrongdoing. For all I see and falling short of your glory. If my people who are called by my name, when one of them says, sing my face and pray, turn for their wickedness, then will you go here for them? Will you forgive their sin? Will you read their Father, we take forgive us. How much it was, us, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I cover your people with the blood of Jesus. I pray for your forgiveness over their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please share and invite someone. This war came for people today. Please share and invite someone. You that are listening and you have people in your heart and you refuse to forgive, the Lord is saying forgive today. Forget and let go of your anger, your hate, your bitterness, your resentment. When you forgive, you receive your healing. You will recover everything, all your wasted years, the Lord will restore. Unforgiveness is of the devil and forgiveness is of God. Choose. Choose. Choose the devil or you choose God. When you, do, when you forgive, you are a children of God. Or then that believes in John 1, 12, say, He gave them the power to become sons and daughters of God. If you forgive, you are God's children automatically. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bye-bye. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you.